I am Claudia. God bless such generous people as you who make our world shine that much brighter with your love. Welcome to today's program entitled Provoking Thought on World Emergencies, Contagion and the Land of Hope and Glory. The 2011 drama Contagion begins with Beth coming back to the US from a business trip in Hong Kong. She is not feeling well but thinks it must be due to jet lag. Two days later, her husband Mitch has to rush her into the hospital. It was a groundbreaking ceremony for a new factory. Did she mention seeing anyone who was sick? Anyone on a plane at the airport? No, she said she was jet lagged. The average person touches their face three to five times every waking minute. In between, we're touching doorknobs, water fountains, and each other. Beth! No, no, uh, uh, go up to your room, honey. So we have a virus with no treatment protocol and no vaccine at this time. You had a seizure this morning, Beth. She had a history of seizures? No, no, no. no. Allergies? As of last night, there were 32 cases. Unfortunately, she did die. Right. And I said, can I go talk to her? Mr. Amos, your wife is dead. What are you talking about? Okay. What happened to her? What happened to her? Upon returning home from the hospital, Mitch finds that his stepson, Clark, has also passed away, just like his mother. The new lethal airborne virus ends many people's lives and spreads to various countries in the world in just a few days. In the U.S., the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, sends Dr. Mears to Minneapolis. As she attempts to trace the transmission of the outbreak back to Beth, she also negotiates with local bureaucrats to organize temporary hospitals that can be built quickly for the growing number of patients. Epidemiologist Dr. Orantis from the World Health Organization, WHO, goes to Hong Kong. Working together with local public health officials, they finally identify Beth as the index case. Watch this. It's transmission, so we just need to know which direction. On day one, there were two people, and then four, and then 16. In three months, it's a billion. That's where we're headed. They're calling out the National Guard. They're moving the president underground. It will tip over. The truth is being kept from the world. Cook your samples, destroy everything. The CDC determines that the virus contains genetic material from pig and bat-borne viruses. They project that 1 in 12 of the world population will be infected, with a 25 to 30 percent mortality rate. Scientists and researchers work day and night to find a vaccine. Quarantine orders are given and people begin to panic. Tension builds as people search for food and medical supplies. In order to save time and lives, Dr. Hextall tests a possible vaccine on herself. Hello. I need you to get me the names of everyone who serves this room. It's an emergency. You can't panic now. I know. I'm going to get you home. I got people too, Dr. Cheever. We all do. Don't talk to anyone. Don't touch anyone. Stay away from other people. It's mutated. How did Beth become the virus's first victim and transmit it to others? What lessons can we learn? Telling a both riveting and cautionary tale, Contagion was critically acclaimed and was also well received by scientists for its accuracy. Academy Award winning director Steven Soderbergh and BAFTA Award nominated writer Scott C. Burns consulted many health experts and epidemiologists in order to make the film as realistic as possible. 
About 10 years after the film's release, we are experiencing something very similar with the current coronavirus pandemic. Like the virus in Contagion, COVID-19 was originally transmitted by eating animals and has rapidly spread around the world, making millions of people sick and taking more than 310,000 lives as of May the 18th, 2020. As hard hit New York City in the US began shutting down in response to the outbreak, activists gathered at the City Hall to ask health officials to shut down the estimated 85 live animal markets in New York. COVID-19 has been confirmed as starting in a live animal market in China. Their petri dishes, they are breeding ground for bacteria. Anyone who steps foot into these markets, they will track the bacteria, the animals' entrails, the blood, the feces. They will track that on the subways, into their homes, their schools, to medical facilities, into their work. The fact that these are still operating in our city is absolutely abhorrent. Outbreaks like swine flu, avian flu, mad cow disease, SARS, coronavirus, what they all have in common is animal consumption. CDC! It's an emergency! The only way to guarantee that this never happens again is to shut down all slaughterhouses. Let's meditate and pray for the speedy coming of World Vegan. We'll be right back here on Supreme Master Television. In the human cells, these receptors are found in the cells of the world. Welcome back to Provoking Thought on World Emergencies, Contagion and the Land of Hope and Glory. The revolutionary 2017 British documentary, The Land of Hope and Glory, was produced by the founders of British animal rights organization Surge. With deeply disturbing but all the more important undercover footage of about 100 animals livestock raising locations in the UK, this brave film demonstrates to the public that even in a contemporary world of greater sensitivity and modern technology, cruelty and neglect are still commonplace. When we think of UK farming, we imagine picturesque rolling hills of lush greenery and serenity, inhabited by peaceful, content farm animals roaming freely amongst the landscape. These cultural associations of traditional UK farming are constantly pushed into our minds through the use of advertising. And such associations make us feel good about our purchases as a consumer. Most do not realise that we have been blinded by a smokescreen and that the reality of UK farming exists at the opposite end of the moral spectrum in regards to human compassion towards animals and the earth. To begin to understand the hidden truth about UK farming, we must be willing to look behind the facade that these companies have fought so hard to maintain and open our eyes to the truth. Be aware. The government and the animal industries fight to keep the content of the following film hidden from your view. The footage you're about to see is not from isolated cases. These facilities supply animal products that are labelled free range, organic, high welfare, red tractor approved and RSPCA approved. The short but direct documentary is divided into five sections. Pigs, cows, birds, eggs and sheep. We see the extreme and terrible lifetime of confinement these animals have to endure, as well as the unnecessary cruelty that make their lives a constant nightmare. Only 3% of UK pigs spend their lives outdoors. Most of them are confined to less than 1 square meter, 10 square feet of space each. The majority of the female breeding pigs are kept in farrowing crates every time they give birth for up to 5 weeks. The crates are so small that the sows can't even turn around. 
the little piglets only stay with their mother for three to four weeks. Then the farmers mutilate these gentle baby animals without anesthetic or painkillers. Most female pigs are also artificially inseminated over and over again for about three to five years, until they are too exhausted to carry on. What awaits them then is the slaughterhouse. Cows, chickens, sheep and goats suffer in equally painful and inhumane ways. Dairy cows have been forcibly impregnated continuously to produce up to 10 times more milk than they would naturally. About 150,000 of them are slaughtered, some even while pregnant. The calves who survive are taken away from their mothers right after their birth within the first three days. In the UK alone, we slaughter around 1 billion land animals every year for meat, dairy and eggs. Like us, these animals embody the mystery and wonder of consciousness. Like us, they are not only in the world, they are aware of it. Like us, they are the psychological centers of a life that is uniquely their own. Courageously researched and narrated by directors Ed Winters, a Shining World Compassion Award recipient, and Luna Woods. The land of hope and glory gives us a rare, in-depth look at the UK livestock industry and sends a clear message that worth of life is equal amongst all living beings. Land of Hope and Glory may be viewed for free online at landofhopeandglory.org. No animal use is acceptable. Why should billions of innocent animals suffer and be brutally murdered just for a socially procured taste, when healthy and delicious vegan food is easily available? Contagion and The Land of Hope and Glory are two eye-opening films that encourage us to reflect on what is happening right now all over the world and what we can do about it. May we all strive to reduce the suffering that so many people and animals are facing by adopting the more compassionate, health-inducing vegan lifestyle. Noble viewers, thank you for your company today.